Here's what the word of the Lord says. Isaiah chapter 40, starting with verse 3. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all the people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Jump down to verse 30 and 31. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, or for some of y'all, those who wait on the Lord, will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Clearly, the Lord is causing me to struggle with titles this, uh, in this season, so I don't have a title for this sermon. Um, but if I were to call it something, I would call it finding your favor. Finding your favor. Will you bow your heads one more time? Father, speak to our spirits. In Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody in the house of the Lord says? Amen, amen, amen. amen. You look at your neighbor and say, you got to find it. 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 Now turn to your neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor. It might be in the place you least expect it. Uh, you didn't get it because I was talking so soft, but I understand that you need to, you need to get it. Say, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh, neighbor, when looking for favor, looking for favor. It, might it might be in the place, in the place. you least expect it. This week there is a, a little video that has gone uh, viral. Uh, it is a video of a young boy who is watching uh, a playoff game with the Cleveland Cavaliers. The score is tied 95 to 95 with three seconds left on the clock and the ball is inbounded to LeBron, the King James. <laughs> LeBron gets the ball, much like Michael Jordan took the ball against Craig Elo many years ago. And he gets the ball and, and runs to uh, the left side of the three-point line. He shoots it, and before he can let it go, the little boy turns around and says, game. I want you to see this video real quick, and we're going to see what the Lord can say to us through it. Come on, let me show the video just real quick. I want you to see it now. I want you to see it. LeBron has not yet shot the ball, but the little boy don't need to wait to see. He already has the confidence that it's going to go in. So he does not wait for the verdict. He turns around with confidence and moves on to his next assignment. Now, 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 some good church folks picked up on this earlier this week, and, and, and a, a video meme was going around that showed this video, and on the bottom it said, I want faith, like God, I want faith in God like this little boy. Uh, 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 that my confidence is so strong, and, and, and my faith is so, is so, is so uh, grounded in him that I don't have to wait to see the outcome. I already know the verdict. Mm. 
uh, and, and that's profound to me, Pastor George. That is, that is, that is a significant thought to me. However, however, I think, I think if we don't look a little bit deeper, we may, maybe actually will miss the object lesson. Because, because LeBron James has made many three-pointers point before. LeBron James has, has stepped in to a challenging uh, uh, situation before. Amen. Uh, uh, but what makes this so significant is the difficulty of delivering under these conditions. I need you to understand that, that, that what makes this so powerful is that, is that it's a playoff game. The series is tied two to two. I need you to get me. It is tied two to two. There are three seconds left on the clock, and either they make this shot or they go into overtime. So the difficulty of the circumstance makes the delivery of the result that much more powerful. I need you to get it. Are you, are you tracking with me today? Amen. 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 Had it been, had, had LeBron James made this shot with three seconds left on the clock and they were already up by three or five points, nobody would re be replaying this video. Nobody would, would be hyped over the fact that, that he, the shot goes in. It's because the circumstances are so unexplainable. They are so difficult. They are so stressful. The fact that he is able to step into the stressful circumstance and deliver a victory is what makes this so significant. I, I need you to understand your favor may be in a place that you least expected. See, because the last last few weeks, the last few weeks, we've been we've been dealing with Isaiah 28. We've been we've been in that, and and one of one of the the the, the key kind of motif, the key mo a metaphor that we've been using is is this idea of the process of moving from planting to harvesting. Uh, Y'all remember, right? There is the plowing, there's the planting, there's the nourishing, there's the maturing, there is the harvesting, and there's actually after that the threshing, which we haven't even talked about that. Amen. Um, 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 uh, and what we have been saying is, is that God wants to grow us at every stage of our life. But what happens is in the transitional moments when there is growth that needs to take place, we experience pain. And so we start to resist the move of God instead of walking with him. Can I have a witness in the house of God today that, 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 that when growth is taking place, sometimes it hurts? Amen. And so I've been really working on what I've been working on is how can we experience pain, difficulty, challenge and still grow? Because that's where we get hung up, right? It's, it's not that we don't believe, we believe. But when we get into a situation where there is some resistance, there's some challenge, there's an obstacle, we start to resist God and like, man, this does not feel good. And so God must not be here. And if God is not here, then I cannot actually believe or trust that he's going to take care of me. So since I can't trust it, I'll take care of myself. Can we be honest? Are, 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 are we, in, are, are we in, 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 in sync today? Are we in sync? Amen. Right. So, so what I'm trying to, to uh, is, uh, uh, uncover is how do we engage with God in the transitional moments in our lives that actually cause us to some strife. It causes us some challenge. It causes us some frustration. What do we do in those circumstances? And, 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 and I actually want to show you what God is doing in those circumstances so that we can learn how to respond to the work of God. See, last week I talked about what you should do. In other words, sacrificial intercession. We talked about that unconventional faith, ferocious faithfulness. We talked about that. You got to go back uh, to next, last week to get it, right? That's, what, that's what, God, what you can do, right? But I want to elevate our thinking today to understand what God is actually doing, right? Because God, I need somebody to hear it, is not absent in the pain of your growth. He's not absent. He has not, he has not checked out when your life is difficult. 
come here, come here, come here, come here. He has, he has not, he has not surrendered you to the, to the wiles of the devil. Okay, the attack of the devil. Wiles is an old word. That's what my pastor used to say back in California. That's what he said, wiles. Amen, amen. So y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Right? He, he, he's, he's not absent, y'all. I, I need you to get this. I'm going I'm to move on in just a second, but I need you to understand that, that he is not, that he has not vacated his position. He's, he's not gone. So, so, so when I'm in this, I, the tendency is to think God is not here. So I got to do for myself because God's not doing for me. So I want us to understand what is God actually doing? Because in our passage today, it's a beautiful passage that many have heard uh, for, for, for many years, but I don't think we actually understand what's going on in Isaiah chapter 40. In Isaiah chapter 40, what's happening is, is that the Israelites, again, are in Babylonian captivity. That means that they're, they're under uh, oppression, they're under difficult circumstance, and it's kind of funny because in chapter 39, it's like things are kind of going well, and then by chapter 40, it's almost like uh, uh, Isaiah goes to sleep, has a dream, and he wakes up, and everything has changed. Has anybody ever felt like that, that your life has changed overnight? Ever felt like, you know what, wow, this is, this is a lot that's happened in a short amount of time. Like, what in the world is going on up in here? Right? And, so, and so what happens is, is, is Isaiah actually wakes up, uh, 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 metaphorically, he wakes up with a word of encouragement for those who are in captivity, those who are in a difficult situation. And what he actually says to them when you read the passage is that, is that, is that this may feel like a wilderness, but God is about to break through in the midst of the wilderness. Amen. Amen. Not, not that you are going to receive a breakthrough, but that God is going to break through into the wilderness. He's going to show up in the wilderness. Amen. No, 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 no. Not that you are going to make it to the promised land and God will reserve his presence for the promised land. No, 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 no. God's going to show up in the wilderness. That's what the text is saying. And he says, and he says, and he says, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Now, now processional avenues was normally something that were prepared for dignitaries and generally it was in the middle of a city. Right? But, but in this case, what we see happening is that, that God is, is talking through Isaiah about what Jesus will do through John the Baptist. And he's saying, hey, this is what's going to happen while the children of Israel feel like they are wandering in the wilderness. There is going to be a way that is made and prepared for Jesus to glorify himself while they're struggling. Come here, come here, come here. Not once you get to the promised land, right where you are. You don't actually need deliverance to see the glory of God. You, 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 you don't need something, a, a new season to actually see the glory of God. You don't need a new answer to pray to see the glory of God. God's showing up right where you are. Amen. 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 And so there's three things uh, I got to move forward. There's three things that God does. There's three things that God does when he breaks in to the wilderness. Three things that he does. Amen. 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 The first thing is that he destroys dependency. Ooh, 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 ooh. Amen. Amen. I, I like this word. Well, I don't know if you do, but I like it. Amen. Watch, watch the text that we started with. He says, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight the desert a highway for God. Okay, so he's coming in the wilderness. Great. Then this is what happens. Every valley shall be raised up. <laughs> Every mountain and hill be made low. What? What? The rough ground shall become level. The rug, rugged, rugged places plain. And the glory of God is going to be revealed. He is, he, is, he is destroying the natural order of things. 
so that he can perform his supernatural work. Because he understands that the children of Israel, much like us, have become dependent upon physical and material things rather than on the spirit of the Lord. So when God breaks into your wilderness, I need you to understand one of his agendas is to destroy your dependency upon everything else but him. You're wondering why the rug feels like it's being pulled out from under you. You're wondering why you, you feel like, like, like things are, are, are crumbling right before your eyes. The reason is God is destroying everything that you've learned to depend on so you will have no other choice but to say, for you I live and for you, I die. I'm, I'm putting my confidence in you. I'm leaning into you. I'm trusting in you because I don't have any other choice because everything else that I thought was going to sustain me has now been removed from my life. He's destroying dependency. And when he does it, you just need to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, it hurts, but thank you, Jesus. I don't like it, but thank you, Lord. It feels a little difficult. Thank you, Jesus. I don't understand what you're fully doing, but I trust you anyway. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 You can't say amen. Just say ouch. Dependency. Dependency has become a distraction from the divine power of the Lord. And that's, and that's the second thing that he does when he breaks into the wilderness. The second thing that he does, second thing that he does, come on, come on. The second thing that he does is he, he declares his divinity. So he, he destroys, see, I want you to understand there's a process of this. He actually destroys dependency. Everything that you've learned to trust, everything you've learned to depend on, he says, mm-mm, that's not it. Then he resurrects what is it, Amen. And, and, and he declares his divinity. Can you read a little Bible with me? Just say, yeah. yeah. Come on, I need a little more people. If you can read a little Bible, say, yeah. yeah. All right, here it is. Here it is. Look, look what happens. Starting in verse 9, here it is. It says, it says uh, uh, you, bring, you bring the good news to Zion. Go up on the high mountain. You bring the good news to Jerusalem. Lift your voice with a shout. Lift it up and do not be afraid. Excuse me. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. Watch this, verse 10. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his rep recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody ought to need to say amen. He tends his flock like a sheep. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Right? So this is, this is the nurturing side of God. But you got to jump down. You got to jump down with me to verse 21. Jump there with me real quick. Do you not know he's declaring his divinity? Watch this. Do you, it almost sounds like he's talking to Job. Do you not know... Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth and its, its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and he spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take the root in the ground, then he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like shaft. To whom will you compare me? This is God talking. Who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens who created all these. He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each, each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of the stars are missing. He gives, wait, 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 why do you complain, Jacob? Do you, do you see he calls Israel their previous name? 
You didn't get that. You didn't, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. Cause, cause they're not acting like their identity. They're acting like their past. Y'all ain't hearing me in the house. They're, they're, they're not acting like who they've been called. They're acting like who they used to be. I wish I had somebody in the house of God today that just confess. Sometimes you do not always live up to the level with which you've been called. So, so, so he's like, he calls them by the, he calls them by their previous name in order to jar their attention. Not that he is resigning them to their past, but he's trying to get their attention by saying, Hey baby, we got over this already. Uh, Okay, so, so why do you say uh, Israel? Do you see how he does that? Watch. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. In other words, why are you acting like I don't see you? That's what he's saying. My way is hidden from the Lord. That's what he's saying. We're in the Bible today. Is that all right? We're in the Bible. Uh, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Why are you acting like God don't care? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. Okay, there's so much I could say, uh, Brother Broomfield, but all I want to say is that as he's declaring his divinity, what he's trying to show us is that his sovereignty is sufficient. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what is sovereignty? That means he has power and authority over all things. There's no power that outmatches him. There's no authority that is above him. There is no, there is no answer that is beside him. I wish I had somebody in the house of God today. Right, right, right. He's got all power. And what he's trying to say is since I have all power, I need you to understand while you're in the wilderness that my power is sufficient. Yeah, 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 yeah. You cannot understand everything I'm doing. You can't understand it all. But hear me in the house of the Lord today. What he's saying is it is sufficient. It hearkens my mind to 2 Corinthians where he says, My strength is made perfect in weakness. So you got to look in unexpected places because that's where your favor is actually showing up. Ah, you're waiting for it on the mountain. But God's like, no, no, no. I got it for you right here. You don't need a transition. I'm trying to do it right where you are. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. This is so heavy on my heart. Maybe you can't get it today. Maybe you don't like my screaming. Maybe you don't understand what I'm saying. But go back and listen to the tape because you got to get this in your spirit. It's a shift of understanding, a shift of way of operating, engaging with God that will actually change our behaviors and the way that we, we deal with life. We are walking through life stressed out. Burden down, weary, heavy laden, and get it, trust me, y'all, it ain't just you. We all in this thing, right? It's like, man, is this, is this what it's about? Is, it, is this the American dream? Is this what it means to make America great again? <laughs> because good God, if this is it, Then y'all can have it. Uh, Cause this thing ain't working for me, right? Stressed out, heavy laden, frustrated, confused, irritated, annoyed, ready to turn your. And give folks a piece of your mind. Don't give away too many pieces, though. You won't have much left. I wish I had somebody in the house of God. Huh? And so, and so what he comes along to say is what he's saying to them. He's not, he's, not, he's not trying to, God is not trying to check the Israelites the way we check other people. Right, right. He, he's not coming to them to, like, kind of put them in their place, so to speak. 
right? I know that's the way the text can be read. What actually God is doing is he's trying to awaken his spirit in them. You know, sometimes God has to jar us in order for us to be like, oh, that's right, that's what I believe. Oh, 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 that's, oh, right, right, right. I know I haven't been acting like that. Oh, but that's, oh, yeah, right. I, I believe God is faithful. That's right, that's right, I do. I, I, it, 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 feels, it feels heavy right now, but, oh, that's right. I, I believe that he is sovereign. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, it, feels, it, feels, it feels difficult in the moment, but that's right. I believe he's a deliverer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't understand what he's doing, but, yep, right now, I, that's right. I believe that he has all power in his hands. I wish I had somebody in the house of God. Somebody, sometimes God has to jar our attention so that we can remember what we actually believe. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He's there. So the first thing he does is he destroys dependency. The second thing he does is he declares his divinity. And the last thing he does is he delivers definitively. Yeah, 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 it's there, it's there, we read it, we read it, it's there, it's there, hallelujah. Let's go to verse 29. He says, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. What they're saying is youth are supposed to have strength. But when you're going through life, even, even folks who are supposedly supposed to be the strong ones. Even those who are supposedly supposed to have endurance, right? Come on, come on. This is not just about youth. This is about those uh, uh, who, who are believers who are supposedly supposed to be able to deal with this. He's like, when you go through life long enough, even when you trust me, you're going to get a little tired and weak. So I need you to understand that that's human. That's human. But then here's the shift. He doesn't give you, he doesn't give you an escape clause. He doesn't give us a way to cop out and be like, well, you know I'm tired and weak, Lord. He don't, he don't, he don't allow us to use that as, a, as an excuse. No, no, no. He moves on from there and he says, and he says, but those, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You get tired, you get weak, but if you want to be able to live according to a higher order, if you want to be able to live according to another level, if you want to live in the spiritual realm and not just the physical realm, he says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Uh-huh. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not go weary. They will walk and not faint. Now, so much has been made of this particular part of the passage, and I don't have time to, to, to develop it all. But here's, here's the way I look at this thing. What God is saying is he's going to deliver definitively, meaning that it will be conclusive. There will be, there will be, no, there will be no other evidence. There will be no other thing but to say this was the work of the Lord in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will, it will be so definitive that you'll be like, yep, that's God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was the Lord. That was the Lord. Amen. Because here's what he does. Soaring, right? What do eagles do when they, when they soar? They see. Oh, yeah, you didn't get it. They, see, they're able to rise above everything that's around them. Amen. And they're able to see far beyond what you could see when you were on the ground. Uh, see, see, sometimes, sometimes getting through the wilderness is about being able to see clearly the vision of where God is leading you. Y'all ain't hearing me in the house of God. You got to be able to rise above and not see in the flesh, but see in the spirit. You got to be able to not see in the circumstance, but you got to see with the eyes of the creator. I wish I had somebody in, who, in the house of God today who could say, I get it. Oh, that's right. Because there have been times in my life where I'm seeing beyond where I am right rise above rise above it you got to rise above the fray and be able to see beyond the, the the current predicament but not only that he says they're going to run and and not get weary right this is about the wholeness of life right come on y'all 
Can, can I just talk to my 70 plus real quick? 70, not even 50 plus, 70 plus? Come on, come on. Once you, once you, get, once you get through this journey of life, right? Right? It, don't, don't you feel like you've run a marathon? Huh? Don't you feel like you run a marathon? But, but I've learned that, that folks who, who, have, who, have, who have learned how to depend on God, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they might get seven, be 70 and their body is failing them. They, 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 their children may not be where they want them to be. Their finances may not be where they want them to be. But, but once you've been trusting the Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, 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 some, there's some tough skin that's been built up. And, and, and you, can, you can keep on running even when you feel like your gas tank is empty because you've learned how to depend on one who has the spiritual fuel tank who will keep giving you what you need to keep the mm, to keep the uh, to keep that spiritual car running in your life. I wish I had somebody in the house of God who can testify. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's God. I've learned how to endure and not get weary. Amen. Because weariness and worthiness cannot coexist. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have been chosen for this journey. Hear me. You've been chosen which means that he would not put this in, in, he would not have allowed this in your life if he had not prepared a plan to actually help you get through it. Amen, but, but, but I, love, I love the last one because he says, and my musicians can return to, 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 to their instruments at this time. Um, um, I love the last one. He says, you're going to walk and not get faint. Now, now, I, I just started to wonder, Don, okay, we're flying, soar like eagles. We're running, amen, and enduring the journey. What we need to walk for? Uh, uh, see, I've learned you can see, you can have the energy and the spiritual, the spiritual energy to last the distance, but it's the daily walk where a lot of the attacks come. That's, that's where it happens. You, you know the Lord. You studied your Bible. You've been walking with Jesus. I mean, you've been, you've been running with Jesus, but it is the walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That daily journey where you start to get, you start to feel faint. Like, can I really, see, these are the questions that the devil comes, can you really handle this? And here, that's right. Here's what you need to say. Here's what you say, need to say to the devil. Nope, I can't. You know, the, the scripture is misinterpreted where it says he'll never put more on you than you can bear. That's not actually true. It actually says he'll never test you beyond what you are able to bear. The idea is that there is always more than you can bear because we don't have the strength. Preach, pastor. Preach, pastor. Yeah, yeah. We do not have the strength to bear it. It is the only way we are able to bear it is because the Bible says those who wait on the Lord, those who hope on the Lord, they are the ones who will renew their strength, right? It didn't come from them. It didn't come from their intelligence. It didn't come from their skill set. It didn't come from a pro. It came from God. God will allow you to endure some things that you cannot bear. So you will learn how to rest and reside in him so that when you come out the other side, there will be no other answer but it was Jesus not 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 your promise not your plan not your account it was Jesus not no 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 I need you to get it in the house of the Lord today that what God wants to do and what he's looking for is that while you are in the pain of your growth transition you will understand that there is a hallelujah there is a God who is in heaven who's waiting to provide you strength
strength for the journey and you will not fail when you're walking in the strength of God. You will not be defeated. You will not be destroyed. You will not be overcome because the strength of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run in and they are saved. So somebody needs to understand today, it's time to run into the strong tower of Jesus. Hey, it's time to run into the power of his hand. It's time to rest in the presence of his love. It's time to hold on to him even when you're walking through the darkest wilderness of your life. And I, I wish I had somebody in the house of God today that can say, yep, 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 I got it. My distractions have been high. My focus has been off. But today I reorient my mind to what God has called me too and I'm leaving my hope not in what I not in what I feel not in what I understand is around me but I'm leaving my hope in the one who said I will renew your strength and I wonder is there anybody in the house of God today that says I need a renewal I need a renew I need to get restored I need a fill up I need I need a top up I need God to download a new thing in me is there anybody in the house of God today that will say I am in the wilderness right now but I'm not gonna be defeated in the wilderness. I'm in a crucible right now but I'm not gonna stay here without understanding God's breaking through my crucible favor may show up in the, the, the place you least expected God's glory may show up in the place you least expected God's power is showing up in the place you least expected so learn today I'm coming I'm coming I'm coming and I'm going to wait on the Lord anybody in the house of the Lord today can say God I'm putting my hope in you God I'm putting my waiting in you God I'm believing you're going to renew my strength God I'm holding on to the promise of renewal I'm holding on to the promise of restoration can you put your hands together and bless God today Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Favor just might show up in the place you least expect it. Hear me, in the place you least expect it. Hey, 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 come here, come here, come here. Every eye on me, every eye on me, real quick, real quick, real quick. There's a plowing, there's a planting, there's a nourishing, there's a maturing, there's a harvest, and then there's a threshing. Watch this. But then the process starts all over again. So I need you to get it that this life is filled with stuff that God ain't ordained. He, ain't, he didn't intend this for you. He didn't desire this for you. But we live in a sin-filled world. So the, the goal is not to pray away pain. Hear me. The goal is not to pray away pain so that you are left untouched by the challenges of life. That's not the goal. The goal is to be able to stand up in it. That's the goal. To be unwavered in it. The Bible says, take heed lest you fall. And I just stopped by to tell somebody today, God wants to give you the strength to stand to give you the strength in fact he's he's almost begging let me give you the strength to stand I'm not gonna remove every difficulty I'm not gonna remove every problem but you don't have to worry about the problem as long as you got my presence 
And if you got my presence, that's all the favor you need.